In this lecture, we are going to talk about the apaxial muscle. Apaxial mean AB upon axial, which is the axis. So if you remember, we have the axial skeleton, which extend from the skull to the vertebral column to the tail. Then we have the bony thorax and the sternum. So apaxial muscle, any muscle that found and located dorsally along the transverse spine processes of the vertebral column is called apaxial muscle. And usually these muscles are the extensor muscle of the vertebral column. Their function to extend the vertebral column. And usually these muscles are innervated by the dorsal branch of the spinal nerve. So just to remind you, this is the transverse processes. So any muscle that found dorsal the transverse processes is called apaxial muscle. Whereas all the muscle that found ventral to the transverse processes of the vertebral column is called the hypaxial muscle. Usually this muscle is not consist of one single segment usually they are multiple segments and they extend from one vertebrae to the adjacent vertebr vertebrae usually this muscle is consist of three longitudinal systems we have the iliocostalis which is the most lateral and the medial is the longissimus system and the third one and the most medial is the transverse spinalis system. Okay. Usually this muscle is surrounded and covered by a fascia, which is a superficial and the deep fascia. Usually the deep fascia, we call it the thoracolumbar deep fascia. And this fascia usually surround each group and almost like separate them into the three muscle groups. So as I said, we have three longitudinal system, iliocostalis, longissimus system, and finally the transverse spinalis system. So if we started with the first one, the iliocostalis, we have the iliocostalis lumborum, and we have the iliocostalis thoracic. So the first one, which is arise from the wing of the ilium, and inserted in the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebra and the last four to five ribs. So this one will extend from the idiom, which is the pelvic bone, toward, toward the last two, four or five ribs. After that, we have the iliocostalis thoracis, which is extend from the 12th rib, from the rib number 12, to the transverse processes of the 7th cervical vertebra. So there is a difference in the origin and the insertion. Iliocostalis lumborum arises from the ilium and inserted in the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebra and the last 4 to 5 ribs. Whereas the thoracic, which is the iliocostalis thoracic, extend from the 12th ribs, toward the seventh cervical vertebra. So we can see this muscle here, this is the iliocostalis thoracic, because it extends toward the level of the seventh cervical vertebra. The one that found in caudal will be caudally, that will be the iliocostalis lumbar. For the longissimus, we have three parts. We have Longissimus thoracis, longissimus cervices, and longissimus cavitus. So we can see this is the iliocostalis. This one here, number two, this is the iliocostalis thoracis. This is arise from the ilium, okay, and inserted in the ribs. So this is start from the ilium again. And it's have like several origin from the 
of a neurosis supraspinous process of the lumbar or thoracic vertebra and finally they only reach to the level of the ribs this is the th thoracic part or the longissimus thoracis after that we have the longissimus cervices which again consist of fascicles different muscle groups and these muscles inserted in the transverse processes of the last cervical vertebra so this one here extend to level of the neck and inserted in the cervical vertebrae the last one see this one here just this is a flap or slab of muscle and this one extend toward the mastoid process of the temporal bone this one is the longissimus cavitus so we have iliocostalis longissimus we have the longissimus that end in the thoracic longissimus thoracic then we have the one that end in the cervical region longissimus cervices and finally number four that extend toward the mastoid process of the uh, skull bone this one is the longissimus cavitus so again the iliocostalis and the longissimus thoracic cervical and the one that extend see this one here the smaller one here that extend toward the head this is the longissimus cavitus after that we have the transverse spinalis system and usually it's expanded in the neck region you can see it's very wide muscle found in the neck region this muscle here which is number four this is the splenius muscle and this is form the dorsolateral muscles of the neck region and usually to be able to see this muscle we have to reflect the serratus ventralis and also we have to reflect the muscle rhomboideus which we said before that the muscle is attached to the dorsal border of the scapula if we reflect this muscle here we will see the last muscle which is the semi spinalis muscle okay so we have to reflect this muscle here to be able to see the semi spinalis muscle which is consists of two portions the biventral muscle and the complexus see this muscle here okay we have two muscles here we have this muscle here which is the complexus and the one that have tendinous intersection she see, see this muscle here it's almost like it divided into short segment and this is white line mark the area of the tendon so so we call it the tendinous intersection After that, I want just to, uh, to talk about two ligaments that found in the neck region and the area of the apaxial muscle. We have the knuckle ligament or the nuchal ligament, which is a pair ligament, which is found in pair. Okay, it's extend from the tip of the spinous process of the first thoracic to the broad caudal end of the spine of the axis that's true in the dogs so it's only extend from this area to this area in the dogs whereas in the horse our ruminant extend from the spinal process of the thoracic vertebra and end in the caudal portion of the occipital bone so the knuckle ligaments in dogs it's extend from the spinal process of the thoracic vertebra and end in the axis toward this area sorry I, before that I say this area no it's just only to this area here to the axis whereas in the horse and ruminant it extends toward the occipital bone so again to make sure that you understand this point 
it extends from the first thoracic toward the axis in the dog, whereas in the horse and ruminant, it extends from the first thoracic toward the occipital bone. We have another ligament found in the abaxial region. We have the supraspinous ligament. And usually this supraspinous ligament, we can see here, it's extend from the spine process of one vertebra to the adjacent spine process of the neighbor vertebra. So this one extend in the dorsal portion of the spinal process toward and end in the region of the caudal vertebra. This one here is called the supraspinous ligament.